Hi, this is Tom Reardon, math teacher from Ohio, here to solve the wolf population problem, which is a sinusoid. Naturalists find that the population of wolves varies sinusoidally with time on a particular island, meaning it goes up and down regularly. After two and a half years of keeping records, a maximum number of wolves was recorded 1,100, and 5.2 years, a minimum number of wolves, 300, was recorded. And with that, we should be, answer, be able to answer all these questions. Please press pause as needed. To solve an applied sinusoid problem, these are the five things I prefer to do, have my students do. First, draw a picture if it makes sense. Make a table of values. Sketch a graph by hand from the values in the table. Write the equation of the curve that best models the data, and then solve the problem by answering all the questions. Either solve algebraically, then check graphically, or solve graphically, and then verify algebraically. So using my list, draw a picture. This really doesn't help. Drawing a wolf is not going to help us here, or a forest, or wolves, or whatever. So um, we'll move on to the second one. So making a table. So the table is going to uh, record time in years and then number of wolves. So I'm going to use capital T for time in years and W for the number of wolves. Not just wolves, but the number of wolves. It has to be a number. So again, pause and fill in your own table there and then press resume when you're ready. All right, so putting these numbers in the table uh, at two point at two and a half years were 1100 wolves and at 5.2 years after keeping track of this 300 wolves And we know that this is a maximum and that this is a minimum We should be able to extend this table knowing what we know about sinusoids We should be able to predict when is the next maximum and get an ordered pair here and when is the next minimum and get an ordered pair here so pause the video, figure out those next two ordered pairs, and then resume when you're ready. As a reminder, recall that in the graph of a sinusoid, the distance between two maximum points is a whole period, and the distance this direction horizontally is going to be half a period from a maximum to a minimum, and a minimum back to a maximum is half a period. That should help you. All right, so when is the next maximum? Well, if you take 5.2 minus 2.5, that's 2.7 years after 5.2. So if I add that along there, it'll go max, min, max, min. So this is going to happen at 7.9 years, and that means it should be 1,100 wolves maximum. When is the next minimum? Again, 2.7 years after that should be a next minimum, and so the ordered pair should be 10.6300. Now that we have four ordered pairs, we should be able to make a sketch by hand. So I'd like you to create your axes with an appropriate scale and label the units, and then plot the four points that we have above here. So I used the vertical to be W, the number of wolves. And I marked it off in hundreds and then showed it every 300. And then years, I went from 0 to 12 in single years. Press pause as needed. All right, plotting the four points, they should look like this, about 2.5, 1,100, 5.2, 300, 7.9, 1,100, 10.6, 300. And now what we're going to do is get a sinusoid to go through those curves. So concave up and concave down. Press pause as needed. So again, going concave up and concave, or sorry, concave down, then concave up, concave down, concave up. The curve should look something like this. We're now ready to uh, generate an equation. Uh, make sure you do know the form of the equation. 
The generalized equation is y equals a times the cosine of the quantity b times the quantity x minus c, double parentheses, plus b. And those four parameters are what we have to find. So here we have the table, we have the graph, we have the general equation. So we need to find the values of, the, of these parameters. Now we'll go in order A, B, C, D. A, so what do you know about A? Recall that that's directly proportional to the amplitude of the curve. And the way we find A is we take the maximum minus the minimum and divide it by two. So the maximum minus the minimum divided by two would be 400. So that's our value for A. Press pause as needed. To find B, what do you know about B? B is inversely proportional to the period, and the normal period of the sine function is 2 pi. So B is equal to 2 pi divided by B, that inverse relationship. And we found B to be, um, or the period rather, to be equal to um, 5.4. Okay, notice we um, did an equivalent form here to this equation. Period's 5.4, so that's going to be our B. Notice I'm not going to simplify this fraction because I'd like to see that 5.4 show up. C, C is called the phase shift. And if we look at this as a cosine graph, it is starting 2.5 units to the right. So that means that C is going to be a positive 2.5, and it's going to be minus that 2.5. And finally, parameter D. D is the Y value of the points of inflection. which is the average of the max and min, the average of these two numbers. So we add them up and divide by two. And when we do that, we get D to be 700. Press pause as needed. So summarizing, here are our values for A, B, C, and D. And our equation substituting those in is 400 times the cosine of the quantity, two pi over 5.4, times the quantity x minus 2.5, double parentheses, and then outside plus the 700. We're going to show this with a TI-84 first, and later in the video it will be with a TI-Inspire. So whichever one you want to use, or you could see both. So let's go ahead and graph this on your graphing calculator. So grab your calculator. First again, the TI-84, CE is what we'll use. All right, so here's my calculator. I'm going to first um, put in a, a, an appropriate window. So I'll click on Window. And um, I'm thinking uh, I'd like the X min to be negative 1 and the Y, I'm sorry, the X max to be 12 in steps of 1. That would be years. Negative 1 is just there so I can see the X, the Y axis. Y min so that I have something to trace so I can see uh, the X axis is negative 300 to Y max of 1200 because 1100 is our, our max and I'll show that every hundred. So let me pull that off in case you didn't get that. And then in y equals, I need to type in that equation. So that's going to be 400 cosine of the quantity. Need a fraction. So alpha and then the x t theta n key is a quick way to get the fraction. 2 second caret gets you the pi. Down arrow, 5.4. Ooh, goofed on that, didn't I? So let me try that again. 2 pi, 2 second caret, down arrow, 5.4. Press the right arrow to get out of the fraction. Another parentheses, x minus 2.5. 
and then double parentheses for the first and second plus that 700. It looks like I only have 40, don't I? So let me go over there and put in that extra zero. I can insert a zero. Sorry about that. And then I'll compress enter anywhere. Oh, make sure you're in radian mode. I forgot to check that. Radian mode right up here. That's under mode. So go ahead and press enter and then graph. And it kind of looks what, like what we wanted it to. And I summarize that on the next page here. So you can see the window, the y equals, and what the graph looks like. Press pause as needed. We should make sure this equation is correct before we start answering a bunch of questions. So let's trace on the graph to see if the original points are on this curve. So pressing trace, uh, I'd like to trace to 2.5, so I'll just type in 2.5. You'll notice it says, oh, you want x to be 2.5. I'll press enter. And it says at two and a half years, there are 1,100 wolves. So that one checks. At 5.2, I'll just type in 5.2, and again, it signs that value for x. Press enter, and I'm getting the 300. Great. While we're at it, I might as well try the 7.9, because that was one of my numbers in my table. And that should be a max, which is 1,100. Bingo. And 10.6 years. After we started recording, there should be a minimum, which is 300. Beautiful. So showing those two side by side and the other two, I, we saw them, but I didn't put them on this page. I should point out before we resume that there are equivalent equations that will work, other ones that will work. Here are four other ones that definitely will. No, some in terms of cosine, some in terms of sine. They're almost all the same. These, these vary between positive and negative uh, number coefficients here. 700 is the same. The uh, 2 pi over b is the same. Over the, I'm sorry, b is the same. And just changing the uh, phase shift and whether or not this are upside down or not. By the way, there are an infinite number of equations that will fit here, if you can believe that. Okay, so we're finally ready to answer the questions asked of us. You remember those, don't you? So part A was write an equation expressing the number of wolves W as a function of time T, which is in years. Okay, so do that. Remember that our first equation, in term, Y in terms of X, is this. But we'd like to write as w as a function of time, so that would be written this way. w of t is equal to, and then this, it's the same as this one is, except x is now replaced by t, capital T in years. So the number of wolves is a function of time. The number of wolves w depends upon the time t. So w is dependent, t is independent. Part B, predict the population of wolves in seven years after keeping records, is the first one we do there. So there are several ways to answer this question. Um, one of the ways would be just to trace on the curve. So since I'm here, again, I will go ahead and press trace. And I want to trace to seven, so I'll trace seven and press enter. And according to this, at seven years, there are going to be 900 wolves. So let's um, show that. All right, showing that, I'll pull this right off, and you can see that it's 900. Another way to answer this would be to go off to the home screen and bring up Y1. And a quick way to find y1 is alpha trace is where the y guys are stored. You could also use the vars menu, but alpha trace has that. So y1, evaluate that at 7 years for t. And there's our 900 also. All 
Now for the other ones, since you have to do several of them, you could trace, you could do the Y1. But I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a, a table feature for this one. So I'm gonna go back to this and let me pull it over here so we can see better. Uh, I'm gonna go to second table set. Doesn't matter what these first two numbers are, but I'm gonna go down to independent and go over to ask, press enter on ask. And when I go to the table, second graph, which is table, it's waiting for me to ask for the number. So I can type in seven and I get the 900. And I can type in nine years and get almost 815 wolves, 15 years and 56 and a half years. Pull those off. So this is a, another way to get those values. We had trace, we had uh, a function notation, and now we have table and independent ask mode. By the way, it says 56 and a half years after he prepared. Why is this answer 1100? Why is it a max? Well, 55, sorry, 5.4 is the period times 10 is 54 years. That's a period plus the two and a half where we started at it, 1100 gets you 56.5. And the last question, what are the first eight times to the nearest hundredth of a year after keeping records that there are a thousand wolves on the island? All right, so we could go back to, we could look at this graphically. And so let me get the big screen here for graphically. And I could go and say, I want to know when it's what? Uh, a thousand wolves? So in Y2, I'm going to type in a thousand wolves and graph that. And you can see that this graph intersects this in four places. So I can find those four points of intersection. And then if I wanted to, I could extend it out to get eight points of intersection. So uh, second trace is calc, calculate. I want to find the intersection point between this curve, the blue one, yes, enter, and the red curve, yes, enter. And my guess is I'm going to pull it closer to this point of intersection here. I want the one close to here. So I'm going to say the one that's really close to there, enter. And there's my intersection point. So I'll pull that off at 1.88. I can find the other point of intersection, again, by using second trace, which is calculate, and number five, which is intersect. Same curve, first curve, yes, second curve, yes, but I want the one that's closer to this point right here. So I'll press enter, and there's my other one. And let's go ahead and pull that one off. And so here are two of them. I think you have a pretty good idea how we could find the other six. We could also do it algebraically using the period, and I'll let you kind of figure that out, how that would work. Press pause as needed. Notice we could also do this, solve this equation algebraically, solving this equation for x. It looks kind of nasty, but it's possible. It's doable. So you could subtract 700 from both sides and get this. Divide each side by 400. That's the coefficient of this mess right here. And then um, take the inverse cosine of each side. And the inverse cosine of the cosine it just leaves the argument. And then I'm going to have to take and divide. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, divide by 2.4. Sorry about that, having a little tech, tech issue here. Uh, divide by this uh, fraction here, and then add 2.5 to finally get x. This is the exact va value for x. To use your calculator, you get this is the value, 3.12. And let me just kind of copy that and go backwards and show you that that's the same answer that we got before here. 
another goof, sorry. So there's the 3.12 that we just got uh, graphically, same value. So you could find the other eight fairly easily. So here are the eight times into the nearest hundredth of a year. So this concludes the TID4 version. Coming on right on the heels of this is the Inspire version of how to do this. Uh, this is a wonderful problem, and I like to call it a virtual tapestry of trigonometry. So uh, continue for the Inspire version. For the Inspire solution, um, again, here's the window, very similar to what we had before. Um, and this is typed into F1 of X. Then when you press graph, it will look like this. I traced to 2.5 and got 1100. I traced to 5.2 and got 300, so it double checked. I also defined out the second answers. I did F1 of seven, F1 of nine, and so on. And this also explains why 56 and a half gives you 1100. 54 is a period, and 2.5 is where we started with a max. And what's nice about Inspire is you can find eight points of intersection all at once. So I changed the window so it would go 24, so you get two, four, six, eight, actually nine points of intersection here. And using the geometry um, intersection tool, you can find all the coordinates at one time. And so I rounded them to the nearest hundredth, add this to the nearest whole number, and so there are your eight times to the nearest hundredth a year after keeping records that there are a thousand wolves. This concludes the TI Inspire version. Uh, again, what a wonderful problem, a virtual tapestry of trigonometry. This is Tom Reardon, math teacher from Ohio.